This Mobile Geeks video is powered by ASUS. Hi, my name is Nicole Scott from Mobile Geeks. I'm here in Shenzhen at Seed Studios. This is one of the uh, well, one of my favorite makerspaces that I've been itching to see for a long time. Now, this isn't your traditional makerspace because, well, it's got three floors and a fab. It's got 280 employees and it actually enables incubators. So like everything in Shenzhen, it's on the next level. Eric Penn and his company Seed Studio are showing the future of hardware development. Hackers around the world are innovating on open prototyping platforms, raising funds through crowdfunding platforms like Kickstarter, and partnering with Chinese studios to create manufacturable designs in small batches using technology like 3D printing and open source hardware components. We, we, we call Shenzhen is like Hollywood for makers. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's quite open. It is the market for everyone. You can get what you want and you can make your stuff. Just you take your ideas here and you find the hack space even here or some space else. You just put your things and try to hack it and make it. C Studio, um, we start from 2008. At that time, we have the we, we joined the forums and we see uh, Arduino is quite, I mean, his idea is from Eric's uh, experience. The time he visited Beijing, there is an exhibition, it's an art exhibition, uh, uh, installation, interactive installation exhibitions. Mm -hmm. And he found it's very interesting. A lot of artists, designers, try to using electronic stuff to, to, to their uh, ideas, their projects. And he, he think, that is kind of like um, an opportunity for him because he just uh, quit his job from Intel as the product manager. Yeah. And then he go to Shenzhen to look around. He found Huachuan Bay electronics market and he's, boom, it's amazing. That is the place he wants to live. And he just find the place to live here and call his friend. Just ship the things from Beijing to here. And then we start from a board called Seduino. Mm -hmm. That is a different thing um, between a little bit uh, like upgrade version. We, we collect some ideas from the community uh, in the Arduino community and the other forums. And we think what kind of thing you want plus Arduino. And some, we, we, we collect a lot of ideas and then we develop our board with different, a little bit different functionality and on the, on the board, like we add some button, we change some voltage to output something. And that is our first product. At, at that time, we developed a lot of things related to Arduino boards. Like we have a lot of different shoes, like which is very different functionality for, for, for Arduino. And we also have a groove system, which just plug and play very easily for artists or designers to use it. We call ourselves like maker for makers. Yeah. We try to be a maker. Like me, I'm uh, an artist, uh, inter interactive installation artist, yeah. which I have three years in Hong Kong. I, I make a lot of interactive installations. And then I'm quite curious how this module be made. Yeah. So I joined C Studio and, and yeah, actually I, I was a maker. Mm -hmm. And now I, I, I really know what the makers want. We join some fairs like exhibitions. We go to San Francisco for the first big fair we have and it's a big fair battery. We just very excited at that time we see a lot of makers making their things. Yeah. We have some connection, we, we share our ideas and we share the surgeons what the center of the manufacturing in China. And then we find some requires from the community. They want to make some products for, for I mean, to manufacturing in Shenzhen. So at that time, we developed a service for the makers. What makes this hackerspace a little more different in my mind than other hackerspaces that I've come across is that it fills the gap for indie hardware makers through their community, open hardware component library, and small batch production capabilities. We have uh, our own small production line, which we call NGL Manufacturing Center like 100 square meter place. We have a photo line, which help manufacturing like 100 pieces. And more than that, we can connection with the outsourced factory. Yes, so we focus on like from one to 10,000 
if more than like more than 10,000, we switch to the other big factory like Foxconn. Big factory, they don't care about the small benches. Yeah. No, they no. They just okay. How much? How, how many? How many you want to make? And maybe 100 or uh, maybe 1,000. Yeah. For the maker, is is a lot of the big. I mean, it's, it's a lot. But for the factory, no, it's kind of piece of cake. No, and yeah, and so that is the problem. So we try to help the makers to, to make the prototypes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these two parts of things we see still the, what we are doing here. It's quite amazing to be here as a maker. In the past, it's very easy to get. In other cities, even in Shanghai or Beijing, you need some time to wait. They ship to you. If you try to Google manufacturing in Shenzhen, you can see a lot of red points on the map. In US or like even in Shanghai and Beijing, it's pretty far, the center to the factory. But in Shenzhen, even on the street, it's, it's like a printer shop. That kind of two thing is, is enough good for the makers to make the choice to try to live here for their products. Yeah, compared to the Chinese maker and the US makers, the Chinese makers try to make something can be a business. I talk a lot of makers in the United States, but sometimes for the United States maker, like maybe just for fun. That is a little bit kind of different between the West uh, or, or here or to the United States. Yeah, a lot of United States makers come to Shenzhen and to here it's quite convenient and easy to make their ideas very efficiency. I think the, the makers in Shenzhen, probably in China overall, is that they probably, uh, you know, more concerned about, you know, what their business model is going to be like. It's more than just about making something cool, but uh, also um, how, how they're going to, you know, grow as a, as a team and also how, you know, or even the more, a more basic question, how are they going to pay for the bills so that the project become viable. So I think that's a really big distinction between two, uh, two groups of makers. There is a lot of place talking about the maker movement, but it's really hard to find a good community for the makers to sell their stuff. Like we have the Maker Fair Shenzhen, which is the seventh featured maker fair in the world. I mean, in China, they have something else, but here it's like a station for connecting the West and the East. We invite a lot of makers all over the world. If you come here to sell their stuff, and they give them some talk, sharing their ideas, and even sharing some experience. So I think kind of activities is very good for the community and it's very good for the maker to communicate, sharing the idea of getting some comments for their stuff. These three forms, I think there will be the, the top I want to share, but Shenzhen is quite a place for the makers to, to make the choice live.